Hey what's up everyone and welcome to Daily Code Buffer. The entire internet is working on the APIs and the performance of our API plays a vital role in our applications. So we need to understand how and what are the different ways that we can improve our API performances. So whenever you are creating the API it does not mean that you have to directly optimize it. First of all you need to understand that whatever the APIs are been created do they actually need the optimization or not so for that what you need to do is you need to understand how that api is particularly working and on that api you need to do the performance testing as well so with those testing you will get the idea like how and what the optimization is needed because if you are directly doing the optimization there are a lot of factors involved it can increase your cost as well it can increase the complexity in your code as well a lot of factors are involved so you need to understand and you need to estimate the optimization that needs to be done on your apis so once you have analyzed that you need the optimization on your apis these are the different ways that we can improve the optimizations these are not just the only ways there are a lot of other ways as well but these are the generally used optimization so we'll go through that and if you have any other optimizations other than that you can also share those with me in the comment section below so the first thing we can do is the adding the caching mechanism so what caching will do is so if you take the example that for fetching any data what we will do is from the client the request will come to the server and from server the request will go to the database to fetch the data if there are multiple clients wants to get the same data then what we are doing is to getting the same data we are again and again doing the query to the database so what we can do is if it's the same data then for a particular period of time based on the applications need we can have those data cached at some place there are multiple libraries available to cache those data currently you can see we have taken the example of redis but there is redis memcache and all the different uh, libraries all the different tools available rather than the libraries all the different tools available so with those tools we can cache those data and if the data is available within the cache we can directly serve the data from the cache itself so here what we are doing is we are saving a lot of heavy database queries so that will improve the performance of your applications okay you can see there are multiple calls available and rather than all the calls going to the database all the calls are directly served from the redis from the cache itself and only one call is going to the database that call will again fetch the data and store in the cache itself so that's how we can implement caching and improve the performance of our apis the next thing is the connection pooling so whenever we are getting the data from the database what we have to do is to fetch the data we have to open the connection for the database we have to get the data and we close the connection that's how generally it works but if there are multiple clients available okay and all those clients open a connection for them then you can see there will be lot of different open connections for getting the data so instead of that what we can do is we can create pool of connections those are open so what client can do client will get the request and from the server whatever the connection pool is open using that connection pool we can directly fetch the data okay so suppose in one request if i want to do five or six queries then rather than opening connection for five or six times i can open connection for one time and i can execute all those five queries and i can close the connection so that's how generally we can do with the connection pool the next is the n plus one problem and if this is not done correctly it will drastically decrease your performance of your apis so what does it means is suppose if you want to get the data from the database for your teams suppose if you have multiple teams right so you want to get the data of your teams and for each teams you want to fetch the team members as well okay so suppose if you are doing the query like this like select star from teams so you are fetching all the teams and for each particular team you are fetching the members as well separately okay basically that's how you are doing so here what you are doing is you have n number of teams and for each and every team there are multiple team members so you are doing n number of queries there as well okay so for one team you are doing n number of queries so that's a n plus 1 problem so how to solve this there are different ways we can use the uh, inner joins we can use the separate two queries and we can use all the ids together to fetch all the data together rather than doing single single query for each and every teams okay so here you can see that you can directly get the teams and for each teams you can pass in in query for all the team ids and you can get all the members and then you can separate it out your team members based on the teams that you have so you can see that you are just doing one query fetching all the data and then you are doing the computation rather than querying separately each and everything so this will drastically improve the performance of your apis because you are doing less calls to the database and you are opening less 
connections as well. The next is the pagination. Suppose you have a lot of data available in your database and you want to display data particularly some few records only so if you have thousands of records generally you don't display thousands of records directly on the client side right so what you do is you display 100 records 200 records and then when the user is clicking on next the next sets of records has been displayed so for that we can use the paginations as well we can use this using the limits and offsets in the queries if you're using spring and hibernate we have directly queries available we have directly methods available that we can use to have the paginations so this way we can add the paginations where we can limit the data and we can offset the data where i want first 100 records and i want second 100 records i want third 100 records in that way we can define and we will get the data so this will not give a huge load on your database as well the next is the compression so there are a lot of algorithms available where you can add the compression for your api so whatever data that we are passing as a request and whatever data whatever the response that we are getting payload back as the response for that we can add the compression so server will add the compression to it and client will decompress it to display the data so what it will happen is suppose if you have 300 kb of data to be passed as a payload it can compress the data to a small chunk of data and that can be passed so your data size is very less so it will improve the performance of your apis exponentially so this is also a way we can use there are different uh, compression libraries available to improve the performance of our apis the next is the asynchronous logging so we are all guilty of adding lot of logs in our application because we want to understand and we want to debug our application if there is an issue in our production so ideally rather than adding all the loggers synchronously when the application is running when your request is processing what you can do is you can asynchronously process your logs so rather than in one request doing your actual processing actual business logic plus also logging your application also logging your request what you can do is you can have a separate service or a separate thread or a separate process all together to log your application so suppose in one request you are doing the processing and you can from that request you can create a new thread or you can create a kafka topic or you can create the asynchronous logging whatever there might be a way that you can do to just log your application so whatever logs you want to do you can add everything in a separate threads process or kafka topic or whatever the asynchronous way that you want to use and that particular thing will be logging your application so it will be not directly tied to your request and it will also improve the performance of your application. So these are the basic and most used ways to improve the performance of your APIs. If you're using any other way to improve the performance of your APIs, then do let me know in the comment section below. We all can learn from those as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for the upcoming videos. You can also click on the join button to join my channel and support me. I will see you in the next video. Till then, happy coding. Bye-bye.